Hey everybody, we got a good one for you today. We're gonna to talk fasting, specifically intermittent fasting. I love talking intermittent fasting because it's one of those hyper hacks. It's plug and play in the world of health strategies that are so difficult. Intermittent fasting is so, so easy and it confers so many benefits. So today we're gonna to answer the question that I've been getting a lot recently about ETRF, which is a type of intermittent fasting. It's early time restricted feeding. And we're gonna pair that up against intermittent fasting, regular old 16-8 intermittent fasting where you eat kind of more in the evening. And the question I've been getting is, hey, I'm an IFer, like most people, should I be an ETFer? Um, and the question is coming because a, some research came out recently and it showed for the first time ever that ETRF has confers metabolic benefits outside of weight loss. And so kind of the raging debate for a long time now has been, are the benefits associated with intermittent fasting all contributed to weight loss. And this study showed that ETRF, a type of intermittent fasting, confers metabolic benefits irregardless of weight loss. So for the first time, it's, it's a major win for intermittent fasting. I think it's one of those things that we all kind of knew for a while, but this is you know set in stone, solid RTC clinical research. So um, let's really quickly for any of you newbies, that people that don't know what intermittent fasting is or the ba or kind of the, only know the basics or what ETRF is. And so like, let's just cover fasting really quickly. So fasting is not eating. Let's cover the terms. Fasting is not eating. Intermittent is periodic, right? It is on and off. So intermittent fasting is periodic not eating. And there is a whole bunch of different types of fasting. And there is a whole bunch of different types of intermittent fasting. So like a lot of health concepts, these terms are umbrella terms. So the term of fasting has a ton of strategies in there, right? You could fast for a whole week, you could fast for 48 hours, you could fast for 16 hours. Who knows, right? So that doesn't say much about what exactly the person is doing. Intermittent fasting is a smaller umbrella in there. And intermittent meaning periodic fasting. The most mainstream type of fasting is intermittent fasting in a 16 colon eight fashion. So 16 by eight. And what that designates is that if you have a 16 hour fasting window and an eight hour eating window. So for most people, that means that they eat a late lunch and then they cram all their food between a late lunch and in, in a dinner, right, essentially, and then they don't eat overnight, they skip breakfast, and then their next meal is a late lunch again. So that's how you get the 16 hours, which occurs overnight and in the morning of fasting. And then your eight hour eating window typically occurs between you know, noon and eight or two and 10, depending on what you're doing. So the point being here is that most intermittent fasters have their eating window in the evening. Okay, this is contrary to ETRF, early time restricted feeding, which is essentially intermittent fasting, but your eating period is in the wind, is in the morning, okay? So ETRF in this study looked at when people wake up and around eight they start eating and they eat all their calories between eight and I think their last meal was around two o'clock p.m. So it's essentially the same type of thing. Um, it's a slightly more constricted window, but you're eating all your meals at the front portion of their day. So you're front loading your day with food. And the reason for this and the reason why ETRF has some, uh, quite a few supporters actually, is because of the circadian rhythm. So the body has a natural circadian rhythm where certain things happen depending on the time of the day. And what research has shown is that in the morning we are more insulin sensitive. And so it makes sense that we are eating our calories in the early portion of the day and taking advantage of that circadian induced insulin sensitivity. Um, especially if you're eating carbs. So that is kind of the question. People want to know, I'm an IFer, I eat in the evening. Should I switch to being an ETRFer? Uh, are the benefits there enough to justify me kind of totally switching my day around and everything? So let's, let's get into it. Um, so first and foremost, I would say that intermittent fasting has a ton of benefits and ETRF has a ton of benefits. If I were to rate the benefits conferred by these super cool strategies that don't require a ton of effort, I would give ETRF like an A plus. And then I would give intermittent fasting like an A. Okay, so right there, um, if you're the average person just looking for modest benefits, pick whichever one fits your lifestyle. If you're one of those people that is you know, hungry for every single percentage of improvement and you're willing to do whatever it takes, then give ETRF a try. Because I think at the end of the day, that, that circadian induced insulin sensitivity, depending on your diet, depending on a couple other things, it might work a little bit better for you. So um, the, the thing to understand is that it, this all comes down to lifestyle, as do a lot of health solutions. So whichever fits into your lifestyle is going to be the one you want to go with. So if you're a learning I'm learning. If you're a morning, um, wow. <laughs> if you are a morning bird 
and you love mornings, you hop up at 7 a.m. and you go for your run and you love mornings, you love breakfast, you are wide awake in the morning, then ETRF might be your just perfect strategy, right? It might per fit perfectly with your lifestyle. But on the on contrary, like if you are a night owl and you are more metabolically active in the night and you do most of your things in the evening and you stay up a little bit later, then normal intermittent fasting with the eating window shifted towards the evening might work better for you. The other big thing is like if you have a family, so if you work and you have kids, I think it's important to preserve that meal time with your family. And nine times out of 10, that meal, that family meal is dinner. And so, you know, I don't want you to up, you know, overhaul your entire family structure just so you can do ETRF and get a few more benefits than just regular old IF where you can preserve that family meal and dinner, and sit down with your family and, you know, talk about the day and whatnot. So at the end of the day, again, you're looking at A plus benefits for ETRF or, you know, A benefits for intermittent fasting. So one of them you're eating in the morning, one of them you're eating in the evening. Uh, at the end of the day, I'd say you, you're probably going to get a bigger bump in benefit from restricting that eating window than from switching from one to the other. So if you're doing a 16-8 intermittent fast right now, try a, you know, an 18-6 or a 24 intermittent fast, right? Those are restricting those eating windows is going to prolong the fast. I mean, if you restrict one, one the other one's got to get a little bit bigger. So try a 24. Um, 20 hours fasting, four hours eating, see what that does for you, especially if you like having that window in the evening. I think that's gonna probably confer more benefits than switching to like something like ETRF. Uh, the other option is try other types of fasting. So you can do like alternate day fasting um, where you eat ad libitum one day and you don't eat anything the next day. Uh, you can try modified uh, alternate day fasting. Modified just basically means that it's a less extreme form. So uh, you eat ad libitum one day and the next day you might only eat like 400 calories of typically protein, a little bit of fat. Um, or 600 calories or 800 calories, whatever it may be. Uh, you could try Monday fasting. It doesn't have to be on Monday. I call it Monday fasting because I fast on Mondays. I do a 24 hour fast every Monday. That's my off day. I don't consume any calories. I don't do any real exercise. Um, so I combine that Monday fasting with regular old intermittent fasting. And what I've been doing recently is throwing ETRF just on the weekends, right? So on the weekends, I don't really have a, like a structure. So kind of wake up around 8.30, eat, do all my like fun stuff in the sun, whatever until you know two or three and then I stop eating and I kind of relax for the rest of the day. So intermittent fasting during the week, full fast on Monday and then ETRF on the weekends. Again, something to try. At the end of the day, what works for you is gonna be the best long-term solution. So I hope this helps. Send anyone that has questions to this video. If you have any questions, comment below. I'll be sure to take care of you. Uh, subscribe, likes, I'll see you guys next time.